moving on into the elimination finals. We're down here, kind of sack versus Fiend and Hughes. This is going to be some good stuff. We've definitely seen a good showing from both teams, but one, we just saw taken out, right? So we'll see if they're ready to deal with this hot team that just came off of a dub. That's always the interesting thing is like getting into mentalities going into this one is like you just got one three pretty heavy handedly by West and Power Ranger, but you were in the winner side of the bracket the entire day until that moment. So you still got to be feeling pretty confident, but now we're on the elimination side of the bracket. Kynan Sack just barely won mm -hmm. that last game. So it's a dub, but it was a sigh of relief dub. So we don't know how they're feeling going into this one. That's always like, what's the mentality of the player? And it differs for every player in every context. Definitely, definitely. All right, early on, Fiend getting the stock ripped off quickly. Wow. Yo. Oh, okay. Kinda couldn't make it back. So evened up way faster than I thought it was going to. I thought Kinda was going to be able to make it back, make something happen, make some shake on the stage. But here we go. Very, very even game. There's a lot of slicing and dicing going on. Here we go. Nice. Kinda with the recovery over the top, getting the KO. And now the blue team is not in the lead. It is a tied game. And here we're getting what I was hoping we would get a chance to see. Is this Orion pick coming out from use? This is the pick that he won Karatata with against some of the best players in all of South America, which he is now one of those players. So I'm glad we get to see this. I was trusting his judgment earlier, but I was hoping that we would get a chance to see this. It's working out well so far for them. Dead even game. We're about a minute 30 into this one. You see him go for the side light, then completely wait, then attempt another side light that he can hopefully get the D light into the side. Oh. Or maybe a double D-Light. Is this going to be a full team wipe? You saw Fiend hoping for the D-Light into the ground pound. No, but Yuse is there. Out comes that spear. Here comes the KO. That was uh, wild how Ky kind of almost just ran straight over there and jumped into that neutral signature of Fiend. So it, it turned into a two for one that literally wasn't supposed to be there, and it kind of jumped into the cart and said, take me with me. That's where Yuse is like, he makes you make mistakes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's 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 one of those where like, okay, you're a really talented player, but I'm gonna make you make the bad choice here. Oh, you's almost got the neutral signature to get the punish onto Kaina. That would have been would have been pretty solid. Only in the yellow. It would have been nicer if it was on sack, but of course the situation presented itself that it was gonna be Kaina. But still they're gonna be looking to take sack out of this one. Use the healthiest so far in the game, even though he is very red, still has a stock to his name. They get the KO on sack. It's now Kaina, be fiend and you. The end of this game, I, I mean, yeah, because, yeah, see, I didn't want to call it like that, but what a pogo from Hughes, and that just adds to my point a little bit more. Hughes at the end of that on Maroon was going ham, getting damage upon damage. Almost all the damage that we saw added to, uh, to Sack was done by Hughes on, on the brink of death. I'm hoping that they don't immediately go into the next game because we need to see this graph. I want to look at this graph. Yes, these numbers are important. We love these numbers. They're, oh, they said they went it right to the graph. We love that. Look at that use. Top, second one from the top. Look at that massive wedge. If mm -hmm. that was a wedge salad, you are not eating your entree. <laughs> there is no room in your stomach. You see them bring it out. You, you raise your hand and say, excuse me, sir. You can box that up. I have no more room in my stomach. Not only is it long, meaning a lot of time spent on that stock, but it's also a very tall part of the graph, meaning he also took a lot of damage. That's the maroon. That's getting into that barbecue sauce that you are talking about. This dude is spitting, guys. Are you kidding me? You're nicer to me on the desk than literally anyone else. <laughs> Everyone else is absolutely ruthless to me. Oh my gosh, my man Sparky is absolutely insane with it. And here we go. We're going to see if the blue team can pick it up. Oh my gosh. Kind of. Couldn't get saved by Sack and gonna lose the set, the stock insanely fast. And that was after Kaina was the last one alive for the blue team last game. Sack was in all the 1v2s previously. Then it turned into Kaina. Like, that's what we want to see is Kaina living a little bit longer. But unfortunately, now things are changing. This Maggie pick, the lower defense on it, not going to help him out here. Hopefully, he can turn that in. Of course, the higher strength stat coming out from this can maybe turn those into some KOs. Yeah, Kaina definitely picked a character that will get you out of there with the swiftness with high damage. But you can also be getting got out of there. Nice. Nice coverage with Sack from Sack coming through to save the teammate from getting taken up into the high heavens. There are not a lot of players out there that can make a Maggie pick or the Jala pick 
count in 2v2. Pugsy, one of the best 2v2 players of all time, one of the very few. I trust Fiend whenever Fiend picks virtually any character in this video game. So those are the big two that come to my brain, but unfortunately, at least so far, Kaina is not one of them. We are about a minute and 20 seconds into the game, Kaina already on final stocks. We're kind of seeing what we saw before from Kaina, but at an accelerated pace, largely probably due to this Maggie pick, the lower defense. Fiend was over there trying to terrorize Sack, but Sack able to fight back. You know, he said, hey, dude, you're, you're the one on red. Stop pogoing me. Tried to take him up to the top. Not able to get the KO. Two recoveries this time. Oh. Has not taken over the top. But that gravity cancel down signature okay. will definitely do the job. A two for one special. All of a sudden, that coupon might be changing things. It's like my mom, when she sees a coupon, like she don't want to go to the store, but when she gets a coupon in the mail, things are a little bit different. We all of a sudden have Sack and Kaina in the lead. Three stocks to two. She gets the coupon in the mail, and she wants to go to the store, but you still can't get nothing. Isn't that crazy? That's, yeah, that's true. Isn't that crazy? Come on, man. <laughs> nice weapon toss. Gets Sack off the side and allows for Yuz to run over there and land the recovery, get the KO. Now, Sack has two stocks. Can you get somebody out of there before you lose the first one? No, you can't. Mid-sentence, getting the job done. Red team trying to close this bad boy out and get this to 2-0. This is still dummy winnable for Sack, though. For you sure. saw the red team. They understand how important not only that beautiful 2v1 team combo is. Yo, I didn't think he was going to be able to grab that one, let alone lead to the KO. He's all of a sudden in the 1v1 situation. Sack coming through the clutch. Now you know why they were juggling those weapons. They were trying to delay the weapon spawn because when Sack didn't have a weapon in his hand, it was 2v1 combo time. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, weapon comes in hand. And that axe starts doing work. I mean, shoot, even without the weapon in hand, you saw you saw that break dance led to the first KO. Axe comes out. It is KO time. One, two, misses the three, hits the four. Definitely. Yeah, Dev took him to the dance hall. You know, yeah, it got jiggy on him real quick. Either way about it, we got 1-1, one, one, and that was an amazing clutch. Definitely needed by the blue team because we're here, right? It, it, Third place is definitely not where you want to go out when you get this high up in the bracket. Obviously, anytime you get above fourth in a tournament, <gasps> all the losses. Oh hey, use. my gosh. Use turned that into a KO. That was huge. That was about to be a gigantic issue for this red team that they then turned into a one for one trade. Still going to be at a deficit because all of a sudden this game kind of is surviving. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, look at the damage put upon Kaina. It is not very much. If you're blue team, you see Kaina scratching and surviving. You're saying good times on that one. <laughs> and even if we're looking at last game, Kaina got taken out so early. But if we look at the damage that Kaina was able to do in a short period of time, 528. He's hanging in the damage line. That's also good times. Oh, good times. I think you're the only nice one who's going to get that. It, I, nobody's going to get that right? except you. That, that We're was for too you. Old. We're that too was old. for you, Zip. <laughs> I appreciate it. I actually have the backdrop of the closeout, the credits. No uh, way. I have that picture in no my house. No way. Yes, sir. <laughs> nice job by the by the red team to take the lead back after an amazing start from the blue team. I can't believe it. Kind of still leading with the health for his team and has high damage. Kind of can land some big hits and get these okay, stocks use. out of here, but Yuz ain't having none of it. Seen some good damage coming out so far. No immediate follow-up after that sack neutral light. It ended up picking Kinda, putting a little bit of team damage out. The big fist coming out. Three stocks to three. They could get the stock out from you. Nice. Kine is the one to do it with that side air. That high strength, that high damage coming out from Kaina's Maggie. All of a sudden, this Maggie is really leveled up. Yeah, I don't know. What, I wish I would have paid more attention to Kaina's play at the beginning if it was more of Sack having an amazing start. Because I think the Sack really just got off to on a tear and was getting the stocks out of there uh, for the blue team. But I don't know if it was more Kaina kind of just picking and choosing situations. But here we go. Really going to have to pick and choose the situations here alone on the stage with these two. And you do not have the defense to really take anything when you're this red as Maggie. We basically see exactly what we saw last game, but it's Kaina 
in the 1v2 shoes instead of Sack. It's basically the exact same damage with everybody on the board as well. Kinda with a high strength legend. I don't know if Kinda can really, oh, actually Kinda can risk a two hit, a D-Light Sayer. I thought it might be a D-Light Recovery. Kinda gets the first KO. Now all of a sudden in really good position, loses that for uh, that second stock onto final stock, has used about halfway through this last stock. Gonna be searching for the weapon here, use not really going to put out too much in terms of weapon starving. Just wanted to maintain that stage control. Neutral Light still has use in the orange. Yeah, I think this is really tough for use right now. You have a super slapping character. Got the axe in hand. What, what, what is that? A butcher knife? A cleaver? Uh, yeah, it looks like a big cleaver. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Scary stuff. Oh, no, stuff. this is bad. And this I is think bad. That was it. Yeah, yep. you're done. You're done. Nice yep, he knew it too. closure. Knew it use. too. You saw the GC sidelight, and that yeah. was curtains there. Great punish coming out from Muse. 639 damage. Fiend was caught sleeping a little bit there. Only one KO, about mid 300s in terms of damage. But Muse did such a good job yet again, mm -hmm. putting out big damage numbers, finding the strong punishes. It seems like in the 1v1 situation, Kaina's axe was not looking strong. Didn't really know how to find a way in. Caught a neutral light, but other than that, it seemed like kind of was just struggling. Maybe mm -hmm. a little bit too cautious. Didn't quite want to risk too much. And because of that, you started running wild. I, there was a few times when I wanted to say, man, it uses really letting stuff happen, like let the weapon happen on the right side of the stage and then ended up letting him get up for free. And I was like, man, what's he, what's he doing? He's being too patient. Well, it's because he was just waiting for that right moment. Yep. And he made it count. Made it count. Once that axe recovery came out and he got the side air punish, I mean, you call it, you call it dead on. We all knew it was over there. Rappa Rooney. All right. Nice. We have double axe on the board. Nice combination from Sack. Tries to go over there on the side to get rid of use, not able to get it, but pushing back out onto the side again. Ooh, gonna lose Fiend in the in the time of need. While you're trying to scrap back to the stage, eating tons of damage, you lose your teammate, and now you're on the cusp of getting put out of here with no weapon in hand. So one of the biggest things I'm worried about when I'm looking at Sack and Kaina is inconsistencies. Those are the hardest things to fix. If you do something wrong, that's okay. If you do it wrong the same way every time, you can fix that. Mm -hmm, like, you understand mm -hmm. what you're doing wrong, and you can learn how to fix that. But when it's different almost every time, when Sack is taken out halfway through the game, when Kine is taken out halfway through the game, when one does low damage, the other does high, and then all of a sudden it flips, that's so hard to solve. It's like in Whiplash, when J.K. Simmons is yelling at the drummer saying, you're rushing, no, you're dragging, go my speed, now you're rushing, now you're dragging. How do you fix that? It's so difficult to break down because there's so many variables, there's different contexts every time, but this game, all of a sudden, minute and a half in, we're dead even. Dead even, and it's wild how every game keeps going like this. It looks like somebody gets a giant start, and then every time the team is pushing back. As you, I think you were saying earlier, it's a uh, tug of war. Yeah. Yeah. And this is more of a tug of war where it's it's a little bit more like an actual tug of war game, not these like extreme left, extreme right, extreme left, extreme right. It's like it's just dancing back and forth towards the middle. That's right. That's right. Oh, my gosh. The recovery's gone, but still had a jump and oh, the dodge. Oh, that was close. Makes it back. Oh, wow. It gets a KO for his troubles. Oh, is that the end of Fiend? No, makes it back. I saw those two exclamation marks, and I thought that might have been the end of days. Sack ends up coming in with the side signature. Picked up Kaina, too. Now Kaina's the one sweating getting back to stage instead of Fiend. It's three stocks to two. Fiend has to be so careful. Taken out of the game. We might be seeing a game five situation. Use going to have to clutch this. Mm. If he wants to end it, can't do it. Sack finishes that one up, and we're going to our game five situation. I love when you get a game five because it just shows that there's nothing, nothing flukish about any of these games. These teams are all up here at the top of the bracket for a reason because they're all about that life. And you can see, man, three stocks to the name. But again, it's this weird inconsistency that can be tough to solve for in the long run. Definitely. And even if they catch the victory here, you're going up against Wes in Power Ranger. Exactly. Some of the most consistent players in all of Brawlhalla. Definitely the most consistent in terms of PR if we're looking at South America. For sure.
for sure. So you're definitely going to have to get yourself together before you get got together and going up there to go talk to those two. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, when you look at Maggie and then you look at Rayman next to each other, I swear Maggie looks like she's saying, uh, excuse me, he asked for his steak medium rare, and oh this is my. well done. <laughs> and that's Rayman in the background be like, nah, it's, it's, I'll eat it, I'll eat it. It's I'll fine, it. it's, it's fine. She says, no, <laughs> cook him a new one. <laughs> You know what does a Rayman eat anyway? Man, I don't, I don't know, and I don't want to know. <laughs> I know, right? You know, it's, I feel like if you get on Reddit or something, you'll find like some lore that you don't do want to find do out. That. Do not don't do, do that. Do not do that. Don't do it. Never Ladies mind. and gentlemen, <laughs> at home, I don't care what age you are. Do not do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wow, what a Sarah from Kinda puts Fiend out onto the side. They decide to try to jump use. I sometimes there's like non-committal actions to go out and get people when you send them far. And I don't get it. When you're together, I mean I guess Use could have came over and stopped it. What a team combination Yo. to get that stock out of there. To be ready to throw that Sarah out. Kinda looking good. Now, they weren't able to turn it into the used KO as well, even though they completely split up the red team. Sack is going to fall, but we have a game where Kaina is extremely healthy here. This could be the chance that they need, the lead that they need to come out in the game five situation and go up into the grand finals. If Kaina's careful, if Kaina can extend this stock like Pugsy style, then this would be huge. Ooh. Oh, yeah, Sack picks up a down signature, another KO. The dunkage, I love it. Those are like my favorite types of KOs. So you know what? No, my favorite types are the throwbacks, like like uh, Diana when she throws you backwards. Okay. Taros, yeah. uh, throw you away. Yeah. Those are my favorite types. But those right there, dunks are always beautiful to watch. You can be uh. like, you can be five stocks down, and then you hit that, and then even if you get knocked out right after, like you, it still feels like you won. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, we need to be careful for the blue team here. It's three stocks to three. Kind of still looking really healthy. If they can put some damage on the use, find that KO. That's a good start to it with the side air. Yo, is Sack going to get another KO here? We see the dodge come out from Sack. We also saw the chase dodge back up, saving some of that in-air movement economy, getting the chase dodge on hit. Can they get the KO on Fiend? No, they're going to completely disengage, put pressure on to use. Fiend was getting terrorized on that right side for a moment. Look at the damage. Oh. oh, man, you know that Yuz would have pulled out from that. So kind of coming in and interrupting it, definitely the best choice. It's going to put some damage on Yuz. There's no way that Yuz was going to continue that combo, likely taking out his teammate. Yeah, he definitely was going to KO Fiend if he did it. Oh, my gosh, almost KO'd on the Sarah from the Lance. Fiend really not getting to play. Look at how high the damage is. Scared to even get into the mix. Doesn't want to get into the fray. It's so high damage. The neutral light's going to do it, especially when it's coming out from Maggie. Use. I mean, kind of fighting against use. Oh, my gosh. I, I Man, it's over with. It is done. That is game five going the way of Kaina and Sack. Look at those numbers, Zip. That's what we wanted to see from Kaina. Huge 767 damage. I don't even know if Boeing makes a plane that big. They actually make a 787, so I lied. But let's pretend that that joke was actually good. Sack doing a little bit less damage at 484 this time, Kaina.